How's it going? I'm Dr. J, and today I wanted to go over how to use projectiles more effectively. Before I get started, I just wanted to mention that I made a Kickstarter for the website I'm making, metanet.gg, which will basically be a gaming network and marketplace where anyone can set up a profile, buy and sell anything related to video games like artwork or competitive lessons, and view and share gaming-related content. Anyway, onto the guide. There are tons of guides on how to beat projectile spam, but not on how to actually use projectiles aside from just spamming them from across the stage. I'll be breaking these tips down into why you want to use projectiles, when you might want to use them, where you should use them, and how you can improve your projectile play. First off, the general reason why you use projectiles is to limit your opponent's options. When faced with a projectile, you can jump over it, duck under it, shield or parry it, reflect, absorb, or counter it, roll or spot dodge it, dash back, knock the projectile away, or of course get hit by it. While some of these options are objectively better than others and some are more situational, each of these options limits your opponent's next options or resources in some way. Resources can be stage control, positioning, approach options, general focus in the case of parrying, etc. etc. Basically, projectiles force your opponents into picking one of the numerous flowchart situations by limiting what they can do. Anyway, the concept that I'm trying to explain is generally referred to as zoning in most fighting games, but due to the lack of a universal consensus on what exactly zoning is in each different fighting game, I like to break it down into two general categories, defensive zoning and offensive zoning. Defensive zoning is simply limiting your opponent's approach options, basically setting up a wall of projectiles that makes it very difficult for an opponent to safely attack you. This is generally referred to as projectile camping, but it is even characters like Captain Falcon and Sonic who have no projectiles can camp and play keep away, I prefer the term defensive zoning. Contrary to this, rather than limiting approach options, offensive zoning is limiting your opponent's defensive options. This could mean whittling down their shield, whittling down their health, forcing them to jump, creating approach options for yourself, or gaining stage control over them by forcing them to back off. Now of course some of you are already in the comments typing, but Jay, what about full charge shot as a KO move, or Young Link's projectiles as combo starters and extenders? Now obviously every projectile is different, but they can be all broken down into five different types based on the intent that you use them with. Pokes, read shots, traps, setups, and spacing moves. Pokes are usually moves like the Space Animals lasers, Greninja's uncharged water shuriken, and Link's arrows. These are moves that control the mid to long range, and while they can sometimes be used to stuff approaches, they're primarily designed to do chip damage from a distance, punishing campier players and forcing them to approach. Reed shots are the bigger but less safe moves that generally take a good time to charge up, and generally are high risk high reward when not used from a distance, but can be used at any range. These are moves like Samus, Lucario, Mewtwo, Wii Fit, Mii Gunner, and Robin's Neutral. These projectiles are all about getting a prediction or a well-aimed snipe to be used effectively, and their main purpose is to create a mind game for the opponent, as they will be doing everything in their power to not get hit by it. Setup projectiles are used when you want to start or extend combos, or create an opening to approach behind. Prime examples are Young Link's Bombs, Arrows, and Boomerang, and Peach and Daisy's Turnips. These projectiles can be thought of more as an extension of your character's normal moveset rather than a separate entity, like other projectiles. Traps are basically projectiles that are used when you want to cover one or more of your opponent's recovery or defensive options. For instance, the Belmont's Holy Water and Axe, or Samus's Down B at the ledge. While these moves can be thought of as setups because they can start combos, their primary use in this case is to force your opponent to either get hit by the projectile or pick up one of the remaining uncovered options, if there are any. Spacing moves are your classic keep away wall of projectile moves, like Doc's Pills, Defensive Samus Down B, Lloyd Rocket Camping, Duck Hunts Everything, etc. While all of these moves can be used offensively, when you play the keep away cutting game you're essentially sacrificing stage positioning for creating a space between you and your opponent. That's why I call these spacing moves. So for where you want to use projectiles, let's talk about safety and reactability. Throwing out a projectile from a safe distance means being far enough away that you still have time to react after the end lag of your projectile, if your opponent blocks it, 
but you should also factor in the possibility of your opponent jumping over or knocking out your projectile to approach you when considering projectile safety. It's all about finding that sweet spot for each projectile, where you're far enough away that your move is safe, but you're close enough that your opponent can't react to it. Also, you should never freely be giving up stage control just to projectile camp, as you should be focusing on pressuring your opponent away from center stage, and preferably towards the ledges where many projectiles shine as ledge trapping or even edge guarding tools. So unless you're playing Wii Fit Trainer, you should not be retreating to the ledge and should be instead pushing your opponent there. Okay, so here's how you should start applying this knowledge to your own projectile play in four simple steps. Step one is know your move. Know the best distances to throw each move and how it can be followed up if possible. Know the trajectory it sends opponents in, know its shield stun, and definitely know how your projectile interacts with other hitboxes. I'm currently working on a video on how clanking and priority works in Smash Ultimate, where I'll go more in depth on this, and when it's done I'll link it here, but for now, as a general rule, if a projectile can be interacted with, it will clank unless one of the moves is at least 9% stronger than the other in which case the weaker move is cancelled out while the stronger move persists. Anyway, step one is to know everything you can about your projectile. Step two is have a game plan. Remember that the goal of Smash is not target practice and to hit your opponent with as many projectiles as possible, but to knock your opponent off the stage and into the blast zone. You shouldn't always be running away and circle camping when you're losing by a significant amount. Always have a purpose for any move you use, and always have a plan for what to do after you use it. Step 3 is to condition your opponent. Projectiles have a way of slowing down the game, and the longer the game goes on, the more opportunities you have to get a read on what your opponent likes to do when you shoot a projectile. Don't focus all of your energy on keeping exact count of how many times your opponent shields versus jumps, but do make sure to be aware of any habits or pattern that your opponent shows. Finally, step 4 is mix it up. Like I said, the longer the game goes on, the more you have a chance to get a read on your opponent. But the same goes for them. So you shouldn't be spamming the same two moves in the same pattern the whole match because eventually your opponent will catch on and adapt. You want to essentially bait your opponent into having a clear way of getting around your projectiles, but be able to quickly change tactics and react to their reaction. For some more tips on how to use projectiles, check out the later half of the part 1 of my Samus guide. And by the way, I will continue to make Samus content, and I apologize for the lack of uploads lately, but metanet.gg the website I'm building, link it is in the description, has been taking up pretty much all of my time in the last month or so, so once that's up and running, expect me to get back on a more regular schedule. Anyway, thanks for watching, and peace.